This is section 2.3, linear functions and slope. Let's start with the definition of slope. The slope of a line through the distinct points x sub 1, comma x sub, or x sub 1, comma y sub 1, and x sub 2, comma y sub 2 is basically the rise over run, or you track the y sub 2 minus y sub 1, all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Keep in mind that it, the um, x sub 1 and the y sub 1 and the x sub 2, y sub 2, these little subscripts or these sub numbers just indicate that this x belongs to this y. So I could call this x3 comma y3. It just means that this um, x belongs to that y. So that being said, there's actually another version of this formula. You could use the formula y sub 1 minus y sub 2 over x sub 1 minus x sub 2. So basically you're looking at two points and you're looking at how much you have to rise and then run to get to another point on the line. Let's go to example one. Find the slope and line passing through each pair of points. So when you do these problems here, I always recommend just labeling one x sub one, y sub one, and then x sub two, y sub two. Okay. If I use the first version of the formula, I'm going to take y sub two minus y sub one over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay. I'm going to take y2, which is the 4, it's always minus, and then the y sub 1 value, a negative 1, all over x sub 2, which is negative 2, it's always minus, and then x sub 1, which is negative 3. Okay, that ends up being 4 plus 1 because when you subtract a negative, you get plus. And here I get negative 2 plus 3. And that gives me 5 over 1, which equals 5. Okay. But I like to think of this as 5 over 1 because it tells me from uh, point to point in the line, you're going to go up 5 units, you're going to rise 5 units, and run to the right 1 unit. Okay, the slope is 5. But when you think of it in terms of the graph, you're going to go up five units to the right one unit. Now, um, let's go to uh, number part B, or example B. And I'm going to do m equal y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And let this one x1, y1, x2, y2. So I get negative 2 always minus 4, all over 2, always minus a negative 3. I put parentheses on there, we don't have to. This gives me negative 2 minus 4, all over 2 plus 3. That gives me negative 6 over 5. This tells me I'm going to go down 6 units and to the right 5. So my rise is really um, down. Let's go ahead and plot um, these points see what, what's really going on. So let's go back to example 1a. So they gave me the two points, and I could tell you um, how much you have to rise and run just by looking at the points and um, using the formula. But if I were to actually plot those points, negative 3, negative 1 would be right here. And negative 2, 4 would be right there. And that's the line between those two points. And again, you have a ruler. I don't. So, or I do. I just can't use it on the iPad. That's my line. My line's not going to look as good as yours. Actually, let me draw that one time. That looks really bad. That's a little bit better. Nope. One thing I practice drawing a straight line and circles. It's really hard to draw. Oh, that's the best line I can draw right now. Okay. So, anyway, um, what this means is if I look at the leftmost point on the, the line, which is this one, I go up one, two, three, four, Five and to the right one. There's up five to the right one. Okay, and that's just my two points there. Okay, and look at B. I have negative three, four, and two, negative two. <coughs> See, I can draw this line. Ooh, that was a good line. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at the leftmost point, which is there, and notice how I go down one, two, three, four. 5, 6, and to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's exactly what I said I would do, according to the formula. 
The point of uh, me doing this is if you're given two points and you want to find the slope, I would just use the formula. Okay? But if you're given graph paper, you can also verify that the uh, formula gave you the correct slope. Okay. Does it matter which point you call x1, y1, or which you call x2, y2? And it doesn't. So let's go back to um, A. I should do B. Okay. I had negative 3, 4, and 2, negative 2. I called this one x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's, let's switch that around. Let's call this one x2, y2, x1, y1. Does it matter which, which way I did it? Let me use my formula. Okay, so y2 in this case would be, uh, oops, I mislabeled it there. Okay, remember you have to have the same subscript to make sure they belong to each other. Okay, going back to it, y2 is going to be 4, so 4 minus y1, which is the negative 2, so negative 2, all over x2, which is negative 3, always minus 2. This gives me 4 plus 2 over negative 3 minus 2, which is 6 over negative 5. And going back to our pre-algebra days, remember that if we have um, a negative in the denominator, it's the same as negative 6 over 5. We actually want to put our negative sign always out front or on the top. In this case, I put it out, um, out on top. Okay. So this is our um, slope right here. And notice how this is the same thing as the slope that we had up here. Okay? So it doesn't matter which one you call x1, y1, and which one you call x2, y2, as long as you call um, it x1, y1, not x1, y2. Okay? Um, so the answer is no. So let's go to the other one too. So let's do A. And just to prove our point, so here I have negative 3, negative 1, and I had uh, negative 2, 4. And I call it 1, x2, y2, x1, y1. So I get negative 1 minus 4 all over negative 3 minus a negative 2. Give me negative 1 minus 4 all over negative 3 plus 2, negative 5 over negative 1. And if you remember from pre-algebra day, this is the same thing as 5 over 1 because when you divide a negative, divide by negative, it's always positive. So I got made it positive. And the same thing as 5. And notice how that's the same slope that we got right there. Okay? Let's go ahead and move to page 72, and let's talk about the possibility for line slope. So I could have several possibilities, and the first possibility is I give you two points. I'm going to make two random points and draw a line through it. I think I'm going to, ooh, I'm drawing my lines really good now. Okay, so I give you uh, two points, and I draw a line. Notice how the line rises from left to right. You're going to have your slope being positive, so m is positive. Okay, if I give you another two random points, I could have this possibility. I could have a point here and a point there. Oh, that was really off. I thought I was getting too cocky there. Okay, there's a the line. You're going to have the line falls from left to right, and this is going to be a slope that's negative. And the last two possibilities are when you have a line that's either horizontal. So you have a point here, and you have a point there. And you have a line that's horizontal. This slope is going to be zero. Think about the slope of your... Um, your floors, hopefully your floors, um, the slope of the table, you slope of, um, yeah, you want your floors and tables to have a slope of zero because you don't want any rise or run in that, or any rise in that because you don't want things to uh, roll around um, and so on. 
and then you have a line look like there's no point there, a point there. This line would be um, vertical. And the slope is <clears throat> undefined. You never want your floor to look like that. Put a tabletop like tabletop like this, because your uh, thing would just roll on forever. You had a ball on this floor, it would roll forever. Okay. Now we're going to talk about um, how to write an equation for a line. And in order to do that, we have something called the point float form of the equation of a line. And that's this formula you're going to use. Y minus y sub 1 equals m x minus x sub 1. The y and the x here are fixed values. And we're going to try to fill in the y1, the m, and the x1 in order to find the equation for the line. So let's go ahead and do example one. I think I, sh I should have time to do example one, or example two. Mm -hmm. Write an equation in point float form for a line with a slope of 4 that passes through the point, negative 1, 3, then solve the equation for y. So we need the point float form of a line. So here it is. Yeah. Again, we're trying to fill in this value, this value, and this value. So the y sub 1 value here is x1, y1. And here is m. The slope is m. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the abbreviation for slope, we always use the value m. And I think that might have been on the first page. I think uh, it, it wasn't. So m, you want to write m equals... M is our um, abbreviation for slope. So um, here I have y minus y1, which is 3, equals 4, which is slope, x minus a negative 1. Okay, because our x1 value is negative 1. And then the minus sign just dropped on there. So this gives me y minus 3 equals 4, and this becomes x plus 1. Okay, so that right there is actually the... Uh, equation for the line, but they want you to solve for y. And by the way, this is actually the point float form of a line. So sometimes um, in your homework they'll ask for the point float form, and that's this form right here. On the exam, if you show me all your work, then you'll automatically have it in your um, in your work. So don't worry about that. I don't really um, usually ask for the point float form of a line, um, but if it does in your homework, that's what it looks like. Okay. So we solve for y, so I'm going to go ahead and solve y by going ahead and distributing this 4. So I get y minus 3 equals 4x plus 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So I get y equals 4x plus 7. And this is the uh, me solving for y, but it's also called the slope-intercept form. We'll talk about that more later. Intercept form. solve for y. Okay, so how do I know this is correct? Actually, if you take this point and put it into here, you should get a true equation. So if I put negative 1 in here and 3 into here, this becomes 3 did that equal 4 times negative 1 plus 7. 3 did that equal negative 4 plus 7. 3 equals 3. So actually, you can check your point into the uh, equation it came up with. Okay, that's the correct answer right there. Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. I think I have a minute left on my time, so I'll go ahead and stop the video, and then uh, you can go ahead and start part two to continue on with this section.